I thought maybe there is time to speak a little bit more in depth concerning human existence and especially the mission of a homeopath within our societies. But I wanted to go into deep questions. And uh, first of all to ask, what is the mission of a homeopath within a society? What do we do actually? Actually, what do we do if we follow Hanuman and if we really know how to practice homeopathy? What do we actually do in the society? We bring balance, we bring harmony within an organism who is in disharmony. This is what we do. We give a little pill and uh, all the upsets, all the irritabilities, all the anxieties, all the, uh, they calm down. And uh, then people realize that, my God, this is something fantastic. What has happened? And it appears that the effect of our remedies have a tremendous soothing effect upon humanity. And the aggression in which we live, especially the last, the last 50 years, the tremendous aggression which is leading humanity into a great disaster. Disaster is coming because people are deeply sick. And what is our mission? Is to stop the aggression, to stop the wars, to make people feel love and feel human as they should be. This is our mission. But now my question, next question was, what, why is that these specific people are prepared to go to the struggle of learning properly homeopathy and become these people who bring peace to the world. Why is, what have brought you here? And my answer to this question is that that something happened to the life of each one of you that you felt it was accidental. You heard somebody talking, I saw a book, I hear some cases. Whatever was the turning point where you said, oh, oh, wait a moment, this homeopathy is interesting. I want to follow. You consider this meeting with the, with the effect of a turning point, you consider it as accidental. And I question, could this be accidental? You see, You see, what, what, I, what, what I'm, I'm going to tell you, 
is not uh, something which I have uh, a belief about. It's something I know. It is coming through my own life, the knowledge of my life, and the knowledge of the life of the people who came to be treated and to study with me. This is an absolute, an absolute knowledge for me that nothing is accidental. Nothing is accidental. In a world which is so, so fantastically organized in a nature, in the cosmos, how can one say that we are just accidental entities who pop up for a moment, we look uh, around with some, uh, some uh, fruits and uh, some uh, uh, hamburgers, and then we pop out without purpose, without no, without meaning, without uh, knowing why, why I came. What was that? It was so short. Is that possible? That this, this ignorance on our part represents the real truth and how he came in my life so many coincidences that led me to what I'm doing today to what I have to tell you today so many details that I could never imagine could have happened accidentally. I read the book, yes. I thought this was accidental. And then I met somebody, I thought it was accidental. And then I found out that my life was guided almost by facts and by events to do what I'm doing. And I could never, I could never doubt anymore. Not only that, but I'll tell you something which I hope you don't misunderstand it. You see, when I met a lot of difficulties in my life, a lot of obstacles, a lot of oppositions, etc. Whenever I was asking something for the good of homeopathy and good for the people, I was given it. Never mind what was the problem at the moment? I asked, please, help. And help was given. Not asking about myself. If I ask about myself, forget it. I will get nothing. <laughs> he says, I gave you all everything else, but not this. And I said, OK. I obey, I obey, and uh, I found out through this experience that um, everything is planned in our life. We don't know it, but uh, why we don't know it? Okay, I'll go to this. Because some of us 
are on uh, platform A, some of us are on a platform B, as far as conscious, consciousness is concerned, platform B, C, and at infinitum, an infinite level of understanding, an infinite level of understanding, each one of us. And uh, we may think that uh, the one who has a, a very, very high, a very high um, degree of intelligence, so he will become. Uh, a leader, he will become a scientist, with, uh, uh, and uh, and his uh, tremendous mind, etc. They are in a high level in this scale. I mean, this is not. You may see a much simpler person who is this scale of. Consciousness is very high. And uh, usually, these people are uh, not apparent. You may pass next to them and you don't realize that this is a great human being. Unless, unless your consciousness is raised to the extent of recognizing this. So we are in ignorance because of the levels in which we are. And in that level, we realize whatever is for us to realize according to the level of consciousness that we have. So, so what, what we have as a tool, as a tool to understand the level of consciousness we have. There is a tool. Everyone has, and we don't know it. What is this tool that was given only to humans? Consciousness is something that you can say is with all the entities of the world. Animals have a kind of consciousness. Uh, plants have a kind of consciousness. They realize things. And uh, even minerals, they have a kind of consciousness. Humans, they have a very high consciousness. A very high consciousness. But, this consciousness, that means the ability to realize, good evening, sir. Good evening. A good morning, I mean, sorry. And the box. Me and his That intervention, it was not accidental. <laughs> I wanted to say something which I forgot, <laughs> which means that this intervention was either, either for a good purpose 
or for a bit purpose. Harmony has disharmony. Love has hate. So there are two forces working in the cosmic uh, energy. One force is bringing together things and the other force is, is pushing out things. So the balance of these two forces, the balance of two these forces brings about our existence. Whatever exists in the world, whatever exists, is due to the two opposing forces. You know, in, in, in the cosmos, you know, what we see, what we perceive as material world, is four and a half percent about. The rest is energy, forces, fields of forces. So, therefore, uh, what um, uh, difficult meanings uh, which I want to present to you in a simple manner. Um, whatever is born, according to our understanding, is born, is uh, a result, if it is not accidental, is a result of a cosmic order. So our birth, each one of us, was predestined and uh, since it was not accidental, it could not be accidental, is predestined for a certain reason. That's some of us, we call it our mission in life. Some others, they realize is my fate, my karma. It's my karma. And we see karma on people who are suffering a lot. And you don't realize why, you don't understand why. And you see the karma of others who are affluent, who are rich, everything is coming nicely to them. Huh? And we don't, we don't, we, we are not able to justify why this person has to suffer so much. And this one is so lucky that never suffers. Well, I'll tell you the truth, which I found out, that all of us are having both, both forces inside us. We are good and bad. We have a portion of good, goodness, and a portion of bad, of evil. And we try to balance all the time, to balance. And, uh, and uh, what is the, the objective? The objective. The objective is to come out of this cycle of good and bad. And to come out how 
by doing something that we consider it as good. Now, how comes this? What is the driving force behind this urge for us to become good, to be good? We feel so bad when we speak badly about others. We feel so bad when we do things that hurt others. What is this force behind it? It is what we call conscience. Not consciousness, but conscience. My conscience does not allow me to do this, we say. My conscience is criticizing me for having done this or that. So conscience is the highest form of spirituality that we have within us, the tool which places us in a higher or a lower level. I'll tell you something. You can, you can say, I like to do this. I like to harm another person. I like to, to steal the money from another person. I like to, to do all kinds of things. I like to, to destroy myself by narcotics, by, by whatever. I like to do this or I like to do that, which is against my conscience. And what happens? The more we do this, the less the conscience becomes. That means the conscience is backing up. It's like the peace of the, the peace of God that we have in us. Conscience is what we may call God, or whatever you call it, uh, higher power, or whatever, is the, the portion of us which you cannot escape from. It will follow you. Even, 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 even when you are, uh, when they are criminals, you know, criminals, they have killed several people, etc. And yet, there are incidents where the people in this jail and before they go for, for execution, huh, they turn to be so religious and so, um, so saintly. And you may say, now, this criminal person, how under the stress he's going through has such a transformation. That means the goodness, the good part in him overwhelms him. So, actually, actually, what we as homeopaths need is to take care of that conscience that we have in the back of our minds in order to in order to keep the harmony around us in order to be able to help the people who are suffering around in order to bring harmony to the disharmony that is around us. In order to do that, we have to pay attention to our conscience. Don't go against your conscience. 
if I could say uh, an advice to you, the best advice I could give you is don't go against your conscience. You know this story, my personal story, which I've told you many times, but I repeat it so it can uh, uh, be a, an example. As, as you know, when I was in America, I was offered a tremendous amount, $10 million, to write subscriptions, 10 sub subscriptions for 10 things, for headaches, for influenza, for, they gave me a catalog. He says, write to us the prescriptions, the 10 remedies or 15 remedies that are more prominent in your experience. And we promote this to the whole United States. And from this money, we have calculated so much and so much. In three years, you will get $10 million. And I said, sorry, sir, I cannot do it. He says, $10 million. I said, yes, but I cannot do it. He said, uh, why? Because I said, I, my conscience does not allow me to do that. Because I teach something else. Poor, oh my God, what shall I do now? The man who was dealing, he says, okay, you give us the prescriptions, but we don't mention your name. So it will be secret. Nobody will know. I said, no, sir, I cannot give you, no. Why, why? Because first of all, what I teach is against this, which is important. The second is, before, uh, uh, before you know, everybody will know George has given, he has sold his conscience, he has given the prescriptions. Everybody will, will know that. Well, it's not possible for me to do it because this is bad. This not, should not be there. Now, you may think at this moment, at this moment it was a junction for me. You see, let us, you, you, you can imagine, because he said, you don't want to make a school, you know, university, like this one now, you are here. Yes, okay, we give you the money, you do it immediately. What else do you want? <laughs> I said, yes, but if I build a house with this kind of money, nobody will come to, the, to be treated, to be treated or to be uh, studied. You see, at this moment, I did not vacillate. I was just laughing. I was just laughing with the whole thing. But the one who was making the deal, he was, in the, end, uh, in the end of the discussion, he was walking with my secretary. And I, he thought I could not hear him, but I heard him saying to my secretary, he's naive. He's naive. You understand naive? Stupid. I'm stupid. I heard him, and I didn't speak. I didn't say anything. I come back to Greece, and he fell ill, the guy, fell ill, with poly, polycythemia vera, polycythemia vera. And he goes into comatose state, semi-comatose state, in the hospital. And one of my students goes and see him and take his case and calls me on the telephone and I said, give him Lachesis. He gives Lachesis 10M. And with Lachesis 10M, he goes back, goes out of the hospital where he was dying, suddenly he felt, he says, what, what, what you gave me? He says, I gave you, I telephoned George and he gave you Lachesis. He says, is this what he was talking about? He says, yes. So we must bring George, and how I came to, he paid finally himself, 
for me to go and teach uh, homeopathy in America, etc. But if at this moment you can imagine, can imagine me having taken all this money huh, and built a nice place, 10 million. This place did not cost even half a million. With 10 million, I could build the 10 places like that with, with 10 million. But can you imagine what could have happened in me promoting becoming a businessman, promoting specialities? for headaches, specialities for uh, sinusitis, specialities for bronchitis, etc., etc. So, so all these things for me became, became my, my knowledge, not the faith that there is uh, a higher power. As you say, okay, George, you said that was in 83, 83, this discussion I was talking. And uh, by, by 95, I had built this, this school here, and the Germans, were the first group that they were coming to study in this. It took uh, more eight years, uh, no, more, more uh, 12 years. But it was built in, uh, uh, in a, such an easy way because I, I said, where, where can I find the money? The moment I said, where I can find the money, some people manifest and said, we'll give you the money. We'll lend you the money. We'll give you the money. I said, it's okay. <laughs> Who's built? Now, I had this vision of uh, this school where people will study. And my vision was that you will study in a school in which you will not only receive uh, the knowledge of the remedies and how to use them, but I expected that all the teachers, as they are today, all the teachers will be an example for everyone who was teaching here. And um, and now I want to come to another uh, to another area. What is a human being? Is a human being is the body? No. We have emotions. But very, very strong emotions. We have, we have intelligence. We have mental part. But also, what do we have? We have a, a spiritual part, also. Which is the spiritual part? The spiritual part is that urge inside to be yogis, to become yogis. Yogis mean a person who wants to unite with God. To unite with God. Unification with something which is higher and which gives everlasting satisfaction. And as I told you before, in which level of consciousness we may be, we are struggling more and more for this final, how can I say, final uh, attainment of a human being. Final attainment for a human being. 
to feel in peace with himself and to spread peace around by using a methodology. Now you may be spreading peace around like me when you are you are not a perfect human being. But the fact that you are giving your time, your energy, your attention to learn properly something which will give, will give joy to others, that makes you makes you, how can I say, um, if some, if, if, if some, someone uh, wants to repay you for all the good things that you have done in life by helping the different individuals, because you may say, George, uh, thank you very much, you are going, uh, you are, you, are, you are speaking about very high issues, etc. But, uh, but I cannot, I cannot get out of uh, my weaknesses. I cannot, I, I don't want to miss the joy of uh, finding, finding a partner with whom I enjoy very much sexual enjoyment. And uh, this is not uh, correct because I'm not married or I'm married and I have this and that and all that, but I cannot get out of this. Now, all of this, uh, all of this, the moment that you are still keeping your conscience, all this will not prevent you from progressing spiritually. You say, I am in love and I, have, uh, I love this girl or I have this man, etc. And I, uh, I am um, in heaven uh, when I'm uh, together, you see. And love is actually, what is it? A prodrome of uh, a spiritual connection with God. Because the person who is really in love, he has a taste of the highest spiritual uh, taste as long as the two are in harmony. If this is broken, what happens? The person who is not, who is not who has not done his duty hmm, is destroyed. But if a person has done his duty, that means all along with his love affair, he was helping people. He was giving himself out to sick people, etc. This is credited to this person. And when this broke comes, then he will survive. Because he will have the connection. He will have the connection with this higher power. Well, I'll tell you, What, what, what I say are from real stories of human beings, which I have heard again and again, and I have seen the effect. Okay, 
Before I tell you this, before I tell you what I want to say, I will, I will give you an example. You have a seed of a tree. Huh? A seed of a tree. You put it on the ground. And in this seed, in which you provide the necessary environmental conditions, that means water, photons, earth, and this seed contains the plan, an exact plan of a whole tree. How many branches will have, how many uh, fruits will be there, uh, it's uh, written inside in this seed, which under certain conditions, what is happening? It's happening something which, you see, f for, for, uh, for astrophysics, quantum physics, astrophysics, in order in order to change an element to another element, you need a tremendous amount of energy. Tremendous, I mean, nuclear kind of energy. And when you put this seed into the ground, then under this environmental condition, it starts developing roots, and starts transferring material and minerals of one kind to another kind where it becomes uh, the bark and then the branches and then uh, the fruits, etc. So all this transformation, huh, which is written on a seed, If you realize, you say, now oh, wait a moment. Huh? Can a human being understand or produce a seed? No. So this is something which happens under conditions of which we are not aware. We don't know how. We don't know how. So a seed of a tree produces the plant. What about the seed of a human being? Is it possible that all the seeds, all the different uh, uh, spores, the little seeds, etc., they contain the plan and the details of the plant and the seed of the human being does not contain the whole plan of the human being but it contains the human uh, but it contains the, you may say it contains the the plan for his body i mean how tall he is going to be how nice with nose and cheddar, with ears, and all that, and uh, that's all. No. No. We have qualities which we call the personality qualities, which is consisting of the qualities of our emotions and our mental, our spiritual seeds. So therefore, therefore, we have to conclude, we have to conclude that when the two 
forces, male and female, again the two forces, they come together, they create a situation that oblige the cosmos to attract to this coming together in a, in a sexual contact attracts what? Attracts a seed with a particular pl plan. A particular plan. That means each one of us we have written down in the seed our whole life. But you say, how can you say, if it's written down, that means I am a slave of my karma. I'm a slave of my karma. Huh? So therefore I can do nothing. No. <laughs> It's not like that. What you have given, except of consciousness, except of conscience, we have been given also free will. Free will in which we decide at any moment in our life whether I will do this or that, where I'll go against or in favor, etc. At any, even <coughs> what you are going to eat. You see, I'll give you an example. For uh, homeopaths, you say when you take a homeopathy remedy, homeopathic remedy, do not drink coffee for three years at least. Okay. So he takes the remedy. And then after a month or two, he feels good. He says, now, drink some coffee, because I like the coffee. He says inside, no, no, I must not drink coffee, because if I drink coffee, he told me, OK, but I want to try. I want to try. Uh, don't try, because of this is bad, etc." He says, oh, let me, let me try. So he tries. Oh, I like it. OK, I try again. Yeah. OK, this is nice. I like again. OK. Then, in the end, you drink coffee every day, three cups a day. And uh, of course, there is a relapse. The whole problems are coming back. So you have decided under your free will whether the part of you which is the good part, will be augmented, will be increased, or the negative part will be increased. At every moment, we have to make such decisions. Decisions. And and then what happens? If my decisions are I'm weak, I have a weak uh, character and I cannot resist, etc., etc. And so what shall I do, etc.? Well, if you do an effort as much as you can in order to overcome, then conditions will change to help you towards this direction. If you decide on the easy part, conditions will help you to go deeper into the negative parts. And uh, the end result will be what? Either your inner negative part is augmented too much and overwhelmed you, forgot about conscience, forgot about goodness, etc., or 
if you resist in spite of your weaknesses, in spite of your, of your inclinations to do what, uh, whatever you like to do, then the good part is augmented because you resist. You say, I will try again, I will try again. So what happens in the end? Um, you see what happens in the end. In spite of the fact that you you have all these weak points, etc. The overall result is good. And how can I be saved from these weaknesses? You see, by the homeopathic remedy. You see, somebody is oversexed, okay? He has a lot of testosterone is 150. <laughs> you, see, you see, they cannot control it. You see, they have to have sex three, four, five times a day, all the time, all the time, etc. He says, God, please help me. You see, it's not good, I understand, but I cannot resist. Then you give a platinum, oregano, and what happens? Testosterone comes down, but what comes? Uh, there is some acne which is coming ugly, ugly, where there is a skin eruptions which is coming out, huh? out. What is this? And symbolically, it is a confession. The organism confesses, brings out the what was negative, what was ugly, is coming out into the surface so everybody can see it. That is why the saintly persons or those who, who are uh, in this religion, you know, Christianity, etc., they say confession could save you as long as you feel a repentance, of course. You say, I will not do it again. But you will fall again. Oh, it's okay. But get up, say it. I, I, I don't want to stay in this condition. So, free will. You see the plan. There is a plan of your life. And the plan is that you have to suffer. George, you have to suffer because people will uh, will be against you. They will speak uh, badly about you, etc. And you have to keep quiet and don't uh, react. Okay, but uh, it's very difficult. I want to justify myself, etc. And uh -huh, no, no, just keep quiet. Huh? Or much more difficult things, huh? because uh, conditions of life are such in each one of us that they bring us to the point of we have to decide, and the decision is very difficult. The decision is clear in our heart. It's very difficult. And uh, 
Mm. And that's that is how that is how the people who devote themselves to the uh, to the connection with God that all they want they want that super super joyful state in which is given when someone feels in connection with God you see if if you have ever been in love in a certain moment when you were young, etc., and then you felt at a certain moment such a big joy inside, very, very great joy, and you felt I could now die, no problem. This is a little taste of what the saintly people are feeling in the monasteries. But this feeling comes if they have confessed what is the negative part in them and they have brought it out. And here we come as homeopaths and we actually Right, before I tell you that, that karma, that, that the, the karma, that means the seed who is your plan of your life, have said, have said that you are going to suffer a lot uh, with a particular disease, a particular time. But then, in your karma also is said, is written, that if you had tried to do good for others, then I will manifest to you in your life a good homeopath who will give you the remedy and will release you from the fight. You see? The conditions are coming together. Will manifest. Will manifest. And you are the, you are the one that you you are going to give forgiveness. You say, I forgive you. You don't say forgive you by by words. You say forgive you by just give you a remedy. I forgive you. I. We don't realize what we're doing when we give a high potency. We don't, we don't realize, usually. But actually what we are doing is entering the cosmic energy and, and taking side with a good part of this energy. And it is as if this higher power has given you a power to forgive, to forgive the sins or the weak points or the suffering of others. You see, you realize, we, we, we do it without realizing. In, in the beginning, when, when I started giving remedies, I could not understand. I gave one one dose and it was a miracle. And another person, another person, another person. And I was, uh, by that time, I was in, uh, in the 61, 60, 61, I was in South Africa. And I started uh, giving to the friends some remedies. Before I know, the whole of South Africa, I knew that in this little town of South Africa, there is a Greek who can cure you. And they were coming, a lot of people were coming. I said, what is this? I did not realize. I thought I was great. I was studying like mad, you know, to, to, to learn more and more and more. And so I can be helping more and more people. I like it. I, I said to my God, 
What is this? Well, now I realize I have a difficult, a different realization, you see? Because I have seen, I have seen the difficulties, I have seen the cases where I cannot help. And every time they were coming to me, there were more and more difficult cases. Because the easy cases were treated by my students and they were doing well and no problem. But what about a case that was not doing well? I says, okay, bring to George. So my cases were more and more difficult. And I said, okay, sir, whatever you do, we credit you, but this is your duty now. You do this. And, uh, and there is there is a plan for each one of us. Now, how is that possible? That I am 30 year old, and I am in, uh, I'm uh, 31. I am in India. And some insignificant man who pretends to be an astrologer or whatever they call themselves. And I come to them, and he describes my life after that, to the extent that was amazing in detail. How is, how is that possible? Is somebody who has a problem now? How, is, how was it possible that a human being can see the future of another human being. That means that future is written somewhere, is existing somewhere. And uh, through our ignorance, we cannot recognize it. We cannot recognize it. And sometimes we take the wrong direction. Unfortunately, okay, unfortunately, fortunately, or unfortunately, I don't know. Unfortunately, um, a lot of my students who they came and learn and started giving remedies correctly, and they were become famous. And at a certain moment, they, through egotistical impacts and inclination, they decided, ah, oh, no, I want to be my own, and I want to uh, to become uh, a master, and all the things that exist outside of Hanumanian homeopathy, all the different individuals who are claiming. Hmm, the, in the last seminar here, we have the previous one. Somebody put a question. Uh, he says, the question said, what is your opinion about a potency C4? C4 potency. So I misunderstood and I said the C4, most probably they mean when they triturate. Huh? Minerals have to be triturated, not C4, they have to go 
to C6, and I explain it in this way. But uh, then somebody else came and told me, no, no, this is a misunderstanding. What she says is that there is a teacher in Holland who is saying that the C1, C1 potency is for physical elements. C2 potency is for emotional. C3 is for mental problem. And C4 for spiritual problems. So if you have a problem, uh, you just give uh, the potency C1. C1. Or C2, C3, C4. Now, either the person is crazy who said that, or is a, a hypocrite. I just got an idea that C1 remedy will do good for, uh, uh, for and people believe it. We have a whole ga full, uh, full, uh, full scale of, uh, of homeopathic potencies, which we have to use accordingly. And then they stuck with the idea C1, C2, C3, and C4. And this is the list, I can tell you. I can, I, I hear things which totally crazy and from my student, from my students. So you have to be very careful You have to be very, very careful what uh, your mind will lead you to believe. And uh, there are a lot, a lot of new ideas and new provings of remedies, new provings of remedies. But as I said in uh, the previous seminar, a remedy has to be tested on absolutely healthy individuals. When somebody says, I feel well, I feel healthy, I have no problems in my physical body, I feel balanced, and I, my mind is sane, then this individual can test a remedy. Otherwise, all of us, if we test remedies, will mix the result with our pathology. Because we have the pathology, we take the remedy, and the remedy just brings out what is a mixture of the remedy effect plus our pathology. So when we say this person is a clear remedy, means is close to health. He just touch it with the right remedy now and will become healthy. This is what is meant when we say we have, we have provings on healthy people. And unfortunately, unfortunately, our organisms are sick on many levels. And therefore, the remedies have to come from the uppermost to the second, to the third, to the fourth, before we see the release of our problems. So you understand, I, I try to give you the responsibility that a homeopath has in life. You are 
like gods to the patients. Because the patients will come back and will praise you like gods. And if you believe that you are gods, then will come the <laughs> from up there the punishment. Don't believe. You see, what is the idea? I'll tell you something of, uh, okay, what is the idea of a person who will say he's a calm person, calmness? The person who can take praises from others without any change and at the same time, he can take abuses about himself. Honoring, you see, honors and uh, praises, etc., and abuses and uh, bad words against, and remains without really raising uh, feelings of uh, of greatness, either I am very good or very, or I'm affected by abuses and uh, I am destroyed uh, emotionally. If somebody can stay calm, stay steady within these extremes, he is considered as a uh, calm human being. This detachment, they call it in Indian philosophy, detachment. You are detached. You see, you can hear praising you, but you can hear it, uh, nothing moves inside. And then somebody gives you a bad, uh, bad uh, names, and you can hear it and you say, okay, no problem. So there you, there you are, um, we all are tested. The moment that they are praising us and the moment they are abusing us. We are tested. If you remain calm, you don't, you don't pay attention, you forget. <laughs> 